Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks, and here's a neat little project. Really kind of simple, just a few extra steps. Uh, it looks like this square is going in and out, inning out, almost like a chain link fence would be. I'm going to use indexing lines for the in the center of the page to help me out. I'm going to take a rectangle, and with my ratio unlocked, I'm going to make it one inch wide by six inches long and I'm gonna hit P. I'm gonna control D and I'm gonna make a duplicate. I'm gonna make this another rectangle 1.25 by 6.25. Looks like it's tight. And then I'm gonna take the original one and I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this out of the way for a second. I'm gonna control D and make a duplicate and I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees. Now I can bring my rectangle back. And I am going to take the Smart Fill tool. And I'm going to, well, first of all, I need to delete these center lines with the virtual segment delete key. So we have, and see how the indexing line stopped the, the Smart Fill from going. And I'm going to get those three points, three filled up. I'm going to left click, no outline. So now we just have that. And the reason I'm using indexing lines is because I'm going to control G and group this together first. And I make sure snap to guidelines is on. Now this is a little tricky because there's actually a hidden box there, but you'll see this blue box come up, but it's not actually on that indexing line. So let's take our nudge factor and make our nudge factor 0.25 and nudge this down. Whoop. Well, that didn't work properly. Let's grab, see if we can't grab that outer box. And you have to be exact. So we need to, for this to work, let's zoom in. We're on that one, but we need to change this one. So if you will wait for that four point cross, you can exit over and now you're ready. Now the reason also I'm using indexing lines because I'm gonna use this to rotate this. So I'm gonna control D and make a duplicate I'm going to double click on my rotation. I'm going to put it to the center of those indexing lines. And then I am going to rotate it 270 degrees. Control D and rotate it 180 degrees. And because it's going off that center, it does that right there. <clears throat> now we're going to control G and group that and I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. Now what we need to know is how far it is from this tip to this tip. So we're going to take the parallel dimension tool to have it click on that note and go straight up to that note. And it is 11.84. I don't think that's right. Let me do that again. Let me zoom in a little bit. It could be right. Go from that node straight up to that node. And now I have 12.01. So we're gonna take a rectangle or a square, make it perfectly square and make it 12.01 in all directions. I should have had my ratio locked. And then hit P, put it in the center of the page. Now we're going to take and select it all and we're gonna to go to Intersect, and what Intersect did is made this. Now we can get rid of this. And remember the 12.01, 12, we're gonna make our nudge factor 12.01. Let's get rid of our indexing lines. You can go up here and just turn them off. Control D and make a duplicate and move that over. And you could keep going forever and ever and ever. Then just select that and control D and go down forever and ever and ever. And at any point you can size it to whatever shape you want. But that is a, and if you unclick it so you can see better, it is continuation. It looks like it's going over, over that one and under that one. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's not, the neatest thing in the world, but it would be pretty good. Let's take a yellow box trick and go to object and order and back a page. 
just so you can kind of see it better. Interlocking squares. Hope that helped a little bit. Thank you for watching.